This is your host Danny and this is English Plus, a podcast by Plus Podcast Network. Our episode today is Myths and Legends and we will talk about a very famous hero from the ancient times and this hero is Beowulf. But before we do that, let me invite you to visit our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. You will find a lot more details about this episode and other episodes. And for some episodes, you will find exercises, interactive exercises, you name it. So just go to EnglishPlusPodcast.com. You will find the link in the description of this episode. And you will also find the link to our Plus Podcast Network. The Plus Podcast Network includes free podcasts and premium podcasts. You can subscribe to the premium podcasts on Apple Podcasts so that you can listen to all the podcasts in one place. And for those who don't use Apple Podcasts, you can still have access to all the premium podcasts by becoming a patron of the show on Patreon. And then you will have access to all the podcasts on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. And with that being said, let's start talking about Beowulf, our hero for today in Myths and Legends from English Plus, a podcast by Plus Podcast Network. Beowulf is the earliest existing Anglo-Saxon epic, or a long, grand-scale poem. It tells the story of Beowulf, a Norse hero and warrior who fought and conquered several monsters that terrorized Denmark and Sweden. Beowulf is divided into two parts. The action in the first part takes place in Denmark, where Hrothgar is king. Beowulf, a mighty warrior from Sweden, comes to help the king destroy a monster that is terrorizing the local people. The second part, set in Sweden, provides an account of Beowulf as an old man who must rid his country of a fearsome dragon. And we'll start now with the first part of the story, and we will talk more about the part where Beowulf has to fight the monster Grendel and his mother. As part one of the story opens, readers are introduced to King Hrothgar. He has built a great assembly hall called Herod, where his warriors gather to eat, drink, and receive treasure after their victories in combat. Lurking in the dark swamps of Hrothgar's kingdom is a cruel and brutal monster named Grendel. Grendel lives in a cave with his mother, also a monster, and cannot be harmed by the weapons of humans. As Grendel roams the marshes and swamps, he hears the joyful sounds of song and laughter from Heorot. They fill him with envy and hatred for Hrothgar and his warriors. One night, Grendel goes to Heorot and finds the warriors asleep after a great deal of drinking and celebration. He snatches up 30 sleeping men, kills them and carries their bodies home to eat. In the morning, Hrothgar sees the bloody aftermath of Grendel's attack. Loud wails and cries replace the joyful singing of the previous night. The Danes see Grendel's footprints, but do not think he will return. However, the next night Grendel comes back and kills even more warriors. The Danes gather in their temples and pray for protection from Grendel, but their prayers do not help. For 12 years, Grendel continues to terrorize the warriors. Afraid to sleep at Heorot, they abandon the Great Hall. Stories of Grendel's raids spread to the surrounding kingdoms, eventually reaching the land of the Geats in southern Sweden. When a mighty Geatish warrior named Beowulf, a man who has slain giants and sea monsters and is known for his strength, courage and skill in combat, hears of Grendel's deeds, he decides to sail to Denmark and help Hrothgar rid his kingdom of the monster. Beowulf prepares a ship and chooses 14 brave warriors to accompany him. They set sail for Denmark, arriving the next day. At Heorot, the Geats are welcomed by Hrothgar, who has known Beowulf since he was a child. The king throws a feast for the Geatish warriors. At the feast, a Danish warrior named Unferth insults Beowulf by suggesting that he is too boastful and not a great enough warrior to kill Grendel. Beowulf responds by noting that he has heard no tales of Unferth's bravery. He says that if Unferth were as fierce as he believes himself to be, that Grendel would not be now terrorizing the Danes. 
Pleased by Beowulf's defiant attitude, Hrothgar is confident that the Gaetish warrior will slay Grendel and free the kingdom from the monster's evil. That night, the Geats stay at Heorot. Grendel soon appears and before Beowulf can stop him, kills one of Beowulf's own men. Grendel then grabs Beowulf, but the mighty warrior seizes the monster's arm with his powerful grip. Beowulf and Grendel struggle until Grendel finally manages to wrench himself away, leaving his arm in Beowulf's grasp. The monster staggers back to his cave to die. The severed arm is hung in Heorot as a trophy for all to see. Hrothgar showers Beowulf with gifts and honors him with another feast. The Danes believe they will finally be able to sleep in peace at Heorot again. But there's the problem of Grendel's mother. The Danes' troubles are not over. When Grendel's mother sees her dying son, she vows revenge. She goes to Heorot at night and surprises the Danish warriors. After killing the men's most trusted advisor, she leaves with Grendel's arm. Again, the Danes call upon Beowulf for help. Beowulf and several warriors track the monsters to her lair in the swamps. They find it at the base of a cliff at the bottom of a pool bubbling with blood and gore. Unferth, who has by now changed his opinion of Beowulf, lends him Runting, his sword. Brandishing it, Beowulf leaps into the slimy waters. Grendel's mother grabs Beowulf and pulls him into a cave where the water cannot enter. Beowulf strikes at the mother with Runting, but the sword does not hurt her. The two wrestle, and Grendel's mother almost kills Beowulf, but his armor saves him. Then he sees a giant sword hanging on the wall of the cave. He grabs it and with one mighty swing cuts off the monster's head. At the back of the cave, he sees Grendel's corpse. Using the same sword, he cuts off Grendel's head and returns to the surface with it. He also brings the remains of the sword. Beowulf and his men return to Heorot in triumph and Hrothgar again rewards them. Finally, the Geats go home to Sweden where Beowulf eventually becomes king. And now we come to the second part of the epic of Beowulf and that is when we see Beowulf as an old man and he fights the dragon. As the second part of the epic begins, Beowulf has ruled for 50 years and his kingdom has prospered. A winged dragon lives in the land, protecting an ancient treasure buried hundreds of years earlier. One day, a slave who had been punished by his master runs away and finds the cave where the treasure is buried. To earn his master's forgiveness, the slave steals a golden cup and takes it to his household. When the dragon inspects the treasure, as he did every day, he quickly notices the missing cup. To punish the Geats for stealing from him, the dragon flies over the countryside breathing fire on the villages and setting homes ablaze. Though he is now an old man, Beowulf decides to fight the dragon. He and eleven warriors find the dragon's cave, but Beowulf insists on fighting the dragon alone. Early in the battle, Beowulf discovers that his iron shield will not protect him against the dragon's fiery breath. Just as Beowulf is about to be killed, a warrior named Wiglaf, Beowulf's young kinsman, rushes to his aid. With Wiglaf's help, Beowulf slays the dragon. Mortally wounded in the battle, the king asks Wiglaf to bring out the treasure so that he might see it before he dies. In accordance with Norse burial customs, Beowulf's body is burned in a great fire on a cliff overlooking the sea. The treasure is placed in the fire with Beowulf as a sacrifice. A large burial mound is built over the remains of the fire to serve as a reminder of the great king and to provide a landmark for seafarers. The poem ends with a ceremony of praise for Beowulf. So that is in a nutshell the story of Beowulf. Now let's talk more about Beowulf in context. The manuscript containing the story of Beowulf was discovered in England in the 1600s. It was written in Old English, the language of the Anglo-Saxon invaders who settled in England between 450 and 600 CE. There is some debate about when Beowulf was written and who wrote it, Although the manuscript dates from around 1000, 
The poem was composed much earlier, sometime between 700 and 950. Certain references in the text suggest that the author was a Christian who modeled the story after pagan tales of past Norse and German heroes. The writer was probably either a monk or a poet connected to a nobleman's court in central or northern England. Beowulf is set in a much earlier time than the period in which it was written, and the action takes place in Denmark and Sweden. The story shows the warrior culture of ancient Germanic peoples, where wars were so common that many men held steady jobs as fighters. The king supplied these warriors with food, shelter, land, and weapons. In return, they promised to be loyal and obedient to the king. And now let's talk about some key themes and symbols we can find in Beowulf's story. Beowulf emphasizes values that were important to Norse warriors such as courage, loyalty to one's king and comrades, and honor for those who fight and die bravely. The story emphasizes how fragile life and fame can be. Like any person, Beowulf must find meaning in his world while accepting the fact that he will eventually die. He meets that challenge by facing danger bravely and trusting that the story of his deeds will cause him to live on in the memories of those who hear it. Beowulf has endured over the centuries as a prime example of a Western European hero. He is different from many Greek and Roman heroes in that, even though he possesses great strength and skills, he is fully human, and his successes do not depend upon help from the gods. The story of Beowulf has been translated and adapted by many writers over the centuries. Numerous movies have also been made about the hero such as the motion capture computer animated Beowulf of 2007. So that was the story of Beowulf. I hope you learned something you didn't know earlier about Beowulf. And if you haven't watched the movie, go ahead and watch it. It's a good movie. Although, of course, the details are kind of altered just to help the plot of the movie. In the movie, they show Grendel's mother as a monster, of course, but as a beautiful woman who seduces Beowulf. Well, that is not exactly how things happen in the epic, but it worked in the movie this way. And Angelina Jolie took the role of Grendel's mother, so it worked this way. Anyway, let me remind you again that you can find more on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. And don't forget that English Plus is now part of Plus Podcast Network. And you can access all the podcasts on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Now, for the premium podcasts, you can become a patron on Patreon and have access to all the premium podcasts on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. Or you can subscribe to the network on Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe to Plus Podcast Network on Apple Podcasts and have access to all the premium podcasts. Now, I'll be talking more about Plus Podcast Network in the days to come because we will have all the podcasts live and ready for you. Maybe I will include a special episode next week talking about the Plus Podcast Network and talking about the variety of podcasts that are included in this network. But rest assured, as I promised earlier, English Plus is free and will always be free. And I'm not taking anything away from it. I'm just adding to the network. And to be honest, this subscription model and the premium podcast that I'm adding to the podcast network will help me create more, both free and premium podcasts. So if you subscribe to the podcast network, you will not only be getting great podcasts, but you will be supporting me to create more podcasts. And by doing that, of course, you will be helping English Plus and a lot of other podcasts survive. This is your host, Danny. Thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus by Plus Podcast Network. I will see you next time.